Dr. Gregory Piazza, and I'm one of the members of the Board of Directors for the North American Thrombosis Forum and one of the faculty members in vascular medicine cardiology at Brigham and Women's Hospital. And in today's patient pulse, we're going to be talking about dental procedures and anticoagulation. And what we're going to do is go a little bit through the issues that surround what to do with blood thinners when faced with a dental procedure and what to do when your dentist recommends that you speak to your cardiologist or your physician about interrupting blood thinners for dental work. So if you look at claims data, you actually see that 3.2 million claims have been put in for anticoagulant therapy in Americans in 2019, suggesting a huge population of patients on blood thinners for various indications. In 2004, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services reported 572 million dental procedures. And you can imagine that was almost two decades ago. Imagine how many dental procedures are going on now. So it's easy to imagine that the issue of what to do with blood thinners for dental procedures comes up often. And while it seems like this might be a complicated topic to approach for both dentists and physicians, there are actually really great evidence-based guidelines to help inform clinicians on what to do. Despite this, you might be asked to reach out to your physician, maybe your primary care doctor, maybe your cardiologist for permission or clearance to stop your blood thinner for dental work, even for a cleaning. You might even have your dental visit or your cleaning canceled if you're found to still be taking a blood thinner, such as the morning of the dental visit. But this really doesn't have to be the case. Stopping blood thinners, or in other cases, antiplatelet therapy like aspirin or clopidogrel, is often unnecessary and can, in some cases, put you at increased risk for blood clots. Now, the American Dental Association has come out and made some recommendations about what to do with anticoagulant and antiplatelet medications for dental procedures. And it's really a wonderful document that takes into account the most recent evidence-based data. They note that there's a growing number of individuals prescribed blood thinners or antiplatelet therapy for the purpose of preventing blood clots. There's strong evidence for all of the medications that we use, including evidence for some of the newer blood thinners, that for most patients, it's not necessary to alter anticoagulation or antiplatelet therapy prior to dental procedures. The typical patient doesn't really need to discontinue medication. If there's bleeding related to a dental procedure, usually local measures can be instituted to quite capably contain and reverse the bleeding. For patients who have a higher risk of bleeding, then there may be a need to modify the medication regimen, but that needs to be done in consultation with the patient's physician, maybe their primary, maybe their cardiologist. There's a great piece by Dr. Michael Wall, one of the dentists who has quite a bit of experience in what to do with anticoagulation and antiplatelet therapy in patients going for dental work. And this is available on the internet. And it's actually called Stop the Interruption. The American Dental Association in this education module states that it's generally agreed that blood thinners, including antiplatelet drugs, should not be altered prior to dental treatment. If the patient's taking a blood thinner, stopping the blood thinner or taking less of it for a dental procedure may increase the risk of blood clot development, such as stroke or heart attack or venous blood clot. And the risks of stopping or reducing medications routinely often outweigh the consequence of prolonged bleeding which typically for most of our dental colleagues can be controlled with local measures. The American Dental Association has teamed up with the American Heart Association, the American College of Cardiology, and the Society for Cardiovascular Angiography and Intervention, as well as the American College of Surgeons and American College of Chest Physicians to conclude that clearly for antiplatelet therapies, there is not a good rationale for stopping these drugs for dental procedures.
In 2012, Gary and Glick published a uh, advisory on the issue of medical clearance for dentistry and stated that physician consultation can be a valuable tool for dentists that are considering a procedure in a patient on a blood thinner, but it shouldn't be a crutch. Many dentists are under the impression that the physician, if consulted, can insulate the dentist from legal liability in a patient's care, but it's actually the dentist, not the physician, who's responsible for making decisions about dental treatment. And while it may be worthwhile to consult the physician if more information is needed or more uh, information about the specific anticoagulant, In general, there's not a need to determine if anticoagulation needs to be withdrawn for simple dental procedures, such as a extraction of a single tooth, or perhaps uh, filling a cavity, or a cleaning. Anticoagulation at therapeutic levels should be continued for simple extractions, according to the American Dental Association. They further state that a dental license is not a license to defer dental treatment to non-dentists, even if the non-dentist is a physician. While the physician can and should be a valuable tool for the dentist, especially when gaining information about safe patient treatment, like what's the goal INR for warfarin, or I need to understand more about the half-life of this patient's anticoagulation, it's not really a substitute for the knowledge and experience and clinical judgment of the dentist. Physicians actually have been known to misunderstand the bleeding risk inherent to dental procedures and may not be aware of the pantheon of tools available to a dentist for local control of bleeding. As such, anticoagulation and antiplatelet therapy should not be interrupted or reduced for dental surgery if the risk of bleeding is thought to be low and if periprocedural bleeding risk can be controlled. They recommend just using the local measures. If there's a higher bleeding risk or there's concern that local measures may not work, then, of course, physician consultation can be a valuable tool to the dentist to figure out a consensus on how best to manage the risk of bleeding. But it's not a substitute for the dentist's good clinical judgment and experience, as well as expertise. And with that, I think, you know, we'll conclude that typically for general dental procedures, such as filling in of a cavity, cleanings, and a simple extraction, Interruption of anticoagulants or antiplatelet therapy is generally not necessary, and routine referral to the patient's physician, either a primary care or a cardiologist for clearance for such dental procedures is unnecessary. If there's concern about an increased risk of bleeding or if the procedure is more involved, then of course, the American Dental Association endorses a collaborative discussion with the patient's physician to determine the best way to proceed. I hope this was helpful and will provide some much needed reassurance as you go forward and have dental work done if you're a patient on anticoagulation. Thank you. Thank you.